Hey everyone and welcome back to Interior Cryptids. Well, the season is definitely changing here in TO. The leaves are starting to change color and the temperature is dropping. Although autumn is one of my favorite seasons next to summer and it's a great time to hike some trails, hint, hint. It's also a great time if you're a photographer just to take a drive further north and catch the trees changing color. It is actually very spectacular. In any case, why don't we get on with today's episode. Enjoying the content? Then don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. It helps to support the channel and you'll stay up to date with all the latest videos. Join a community of like-minded individuals and be the first to know when new content drops. If you have an encounter story that you would like to share, then please forward your stories to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. I would be honored to share your story with like-minded people. Now sit back and relax as we begin with today's episode. The first one we're going to take a look at today takes place in Allegheny County, Maryland, and it takes place at a campground. Many years ago, my nephew and I went for a camping fishing trip out to Cumberland, Maryland. There's a state campground that is located on the Potomac River. The sites are dispersed for the most part, and not many people were camping. We drove to the end of the campground to the last campsite, far away from the other campers. We set up camp and everything was normal. It was quiet with the exception of the normal sounds in the forest. Then around 10 or 11 at night, we heard a sound of a woman singing in the woods. Not a song that you could recognize. It was more of a melody without words. I heard it, my nephew heard it, and my dog heard it. My dog was laying down by the campfire and jumps up and starts staring into the woods. I look at my nephew and he looks freaked out. I asked him if he heard the woman singing, and he says, I don't hear anything, and I'm going to bed. Which is total BS, because he is about 10 feet away from me, and it was pretty loud. It sounded as if it was coming from one direction, but no direction in particular. I've read about disembodied voices, and maybe that's what we heard. It sounded like someone maybe 20 or 30 feet away. It wasn't scary or ominous, but it was a little unsettling. I told my nephew that we should walk around to see what it was, but he wasn't interested. After a few minutes, it stopped. I can't say for sure that nobody was hiding in the woods. I've camped with my dog for years, and he was very alert to things moving around in the woods. He would have made it known to someone that they weren't welcome. It was strange that he didn't bark or growl. He just stood up and stared into the woods, just like I did. I tried to find info online about similar experiences, but didn't come up with anything. Strange experience for sure. This next one takes place August 25th of 2024. We're heading to Peach County, Georgia, and the nearest town is Fort Valley. On Sunday, August the 25th of 2024, at about 8.30 a.m., and the temperature was about 68 to 70 degrees, I went to a nearby parts store. They were not open yet. I had to be back home by 9.30 a.m. to watch the grandkids so my wife could go to church. I decided I had time to drive to Fort Valley, Georgia to their O'Reilly parts store and get back to Butler area before she had to leave. I traveled on the newer four-lane highway 96 east until I got almost to Fort Valley. I turned right onto an old two-lane highway 96 that goes towards town. There was no other traffic on the road at that time. As I topped a hill and started going down it in my full-size Chevrolet Duramax diesel truck, I saw a thing that was dark-colored and upright. It was in full stride and running very fast. This was not a jog. It was extremely fast. The arms were not at an angle, but moved outstretched as it ran. 
It came from the wood line of the right side of the road and ran across the road and into the woods on the other side, north side. It was very fast and smooth as it ran. It cleared the two-lane highway in a few long strides. This creature was something I have never seen before. I am 200 pounds and 6 foot tall. It was a good bit taller than I am. There is no way a human could have the speed this thing had. When it got to where it was, I slowed to almost a stop, but it was out of sight. I immediately called my wife to tell her what I saw. My phone showed it was 8.59 when I called her. After speaking with her, I continued on to O'Reilly's parts store in Fort Valley. After that, I drove back by there four times looking for it, but never saw anything. This one takes place May 16th of 2024. We are headed to Towns County, Georgia, and the nearest town is Hiawassee. This incident occurred on May 16th of 2024 at approximately 1600 hours. I was hunting hogs on a food plot on the Shallow Creek Wildlife Management Area, North Georgia Mountains, at the end of Mill Creek Road. I was armed with an AR-15. The weather was warm and partly cloudy, but the air was calm. I had walked out into the field and stopped for a minute to listen and look when I heard a distinct wood on wood knock twice. From a mountain that is at least a quarter of a mile away as the crow flies, it sounded like something had used a wooden bat to hit a hardwood tree. At about 30 seconds later from a mountaintop on a ridge on the opposite side of the field, I heard one faint wood knock. It seemed like an answer to the first two. Now, you have to understand that the road to this spot is one way in and one way out, and I didn't see any other vehicles on it on my way in. There are no roads or trails going up the mountain where I heard the first two knocks, so if it was a person, they would have had to walk for several miles up the road and then bust some serious summertime bush just to get up there. It would be an overnight trip if I was going to do it. The next day I returned in the morning before noon. On the road right before you reached that field, there was a tree pulled across the road. It was bent, not broken or uprooted, from about 10 yards from the side of the road. I inspected both ends and I couldn't figure out what was holding it in place. It looked like it should have sprang back up. There had been no adverse weather the night before that might have caused this. There were many other trees around this one at the same size range that were unaffected. I even made a short video of it. Approximately two years ago, my son-in-law and myself were hunting in the same area. He was on the far side of the food plot and I on the other. After about an hour, he returned and asked me if I had been hitting something on a tree to signal him. No phone signal up there. I told him no. He said he heard it coming from down by me, but I didn't hear anything. He also said that as he was walking out of the woods, he started hearing somebody further up the mountain yelling, but he could not understand him. We were the only truck parked in the access area for this spot, and it's pretty far up the mountain. We had no idea what it was. There are no trails, hiking, etc. up in this area. It is wilderness area comprising of thousands of acres. I've had a few other odd things happen while out in this area hunting over the last seven years. So this occurs in the summer of 2014. We're heading to Germany, to the Munich Alps. Now there are many mountain ranges in the Alps, so I'm not sure which area specifically this summer camp was located at. So this is just a guesstimate based on what I can find out. It's been 10 years since it happened, but the event is something which stuck with me and I want to share. In 2014, I was sent to a summer camp to study German, close near the Munich Alps. The location was remote. On the way out was a bus stop, which was on the other side of the lake, located near a hotel. An abandoned church was the only other building in the area. 
Wi-Fi at the time was really at its infancy. While at camp, mobile signals would come and go. Typically, you would have half of a bar. If you're lucky, you'd had a bar. The camp was surrounded by mountains, and if you wanted to get out by foot, you had to hike upwards and then hike 15 to 20 kilometers through the thicket. The weather would change considerably quick from rain to fog to clear blue skies. The summer camp had six staff members for a group of 30 students from ages of 13 to 17. I was 14 at the time and I was lucky with the group that I had. I would surround myself with a few Americans, Australians and Russians who were good company, but I lost contact over the years. There were also French and mostly Spanish students at the camp. The majority of the time there was amazing, hiking through the mountains, swimming in the lake, making campfire, shooting bows, and playing ball. It was the best summer of my life. Now fast forward to week two, to the event which would change the way that I look at this place even now. The morning was dreadful as the rain was heavy and the wind was blowing the fog into the valley. It was 10 degrees, maybe 11, but I still can't believe we continued hiking in those conditions, but no one was against it. The hike was miserable as we walked up in elevation, but it all went well until we had to descend the mountain. The staff members told us that we couldn't continue the hike and we needed to go back. During the descent, I started to get this sickening feeling of being watched, but it eventually disappeared after we got back to camp. Once in camp, I was talking to one of the guys in the room about how I was feeling, and he said, you probably just caught a cold or something. As time went on, the rain had finally stopped, and we were all gathering to start a campfire. It was around 1,700 or, eight or 1,800 hours. All was good and everybody was enjoying themselves. One of the guys, Mike, brought out his large lumen flashlight, which lit up the forest tree line and on the right side of the camp. At this time, the fog started to flood the camp and the lake, but no one really cared, but it looked cool from what I remembered. Some were running around taking photos in the fog. I asked Mike if I could borrow his light. A few minutes go by and I panned the light from right to left. I jokingly muttered, imagine if something jumps out of the woods. As I flashed the light to my left, a white figure silhouette was walking towards the wood line. I shouted, Mike, look, look, you see that? To his horror, he already started shouting at everyone to look. As everyone in the courtyard looked, the figure stopped and turned its head, revealing its yellow glowing eyes. I couldn't tell whether it was eye shine from the light or its own glow. Its arms were long, super long, similar to an ape's arm drooping down to its knees. Its overall appearance was muscular but athletically slim. The face I couldn't make out from the distance of 40 meters. It then started walking again as a staff member ran to get others as his phone didn't work. All of this happened within a few seconds. As this was happening, the creature looked back at the force and ran uphill. The speed, oh effing, the speed at which it ran would make a deer seem slow. It was fast, rough estimate 40 to 50 miles per hour. The creature could have easily taken all of us out. As this was happening, the staff members arrived and huddled us inside and started to tell us to lock the doors and windows and to stay indoors after 800 hours from now on. The time was 2100 hours, roughly speaking. We huddled in our rooms as each staff member did a room check of everyone who should be inside. The rest of the night, half of the camp started to discuss the evening's events to figure out what we had seen. There were noises on the roof and tapping throughout the night, but we didn't see anything as it was pitch dark outside. The following morning came and the courtyard was covered in small rocks and sticks thrown around the ground. The staff members made changes to the weekly schedule. The staff then held a large meeting to announce that we couldn't go outside a certain radius of the camp as we did before, and we needed to be in groups of six. 
After that, even when going outside and walking around, everything felt off and the world seemed a lot more hostile than what I had experienced two weeks prior. Some of the kids shortened their stay at the camp and went home. Others waited for the week to end. I left the following week, even when my mom wanted me to stay an extra week, to which I declined. A year later, I revisited the camp for two weeks as I once enjoyed my time there until the event the year prior. After all, it was a good language school. They made changes to the camp. I noticed they had built an electrical fence around the whole perimeter of the camp. I was unfortunate to get shocked accidentally by it several times as it would turn on during the evenings to the early morning hours and turn off during the day. The staff said it's to keep the cows at bay, which i never seen walk in that area before and during this time. The time to go indoors was 1900 hours, no longer 21 or 2200 hours like the year before. Cameras were installed all around the area. The groups were still a thing and things were getting more stricter. And the counselors were all new and aware of what had happened the previous summer but wouldn't talk about it to avoid spooking the kids. But the missing cows were a hot topic in that area during my summer there and how the cows would try going into camp. The two weeks went by without anything happening. I did some digging on my own and found out about the history regarding the lake. A girl went ice skating and fell through the ice and died. Also, a few kids died in that region due to drowning in mudslides. There were a few folklore stories of small hybrid animals and tales about the wild man. Well, that will wrap things up for today. I hope you all enjoyed today's episode. The last encounter was very intriguing, especially considering this happened in Germany. It sounds like from the description that the witness gave that it sounded like a crawler to me. Uh, I also found it interesting how all of, it, all of a sudden while hiking, the staff members told him they had to stop and turn around and head back to camp. Uh, did one of them see something or was it just getting on in the day and they needed to get back by a certain time? Don't know and I guess we never will. And the missing cows was also fascinating. Was these crawlers eating them? What are your thoughts? Leave your comments below. Now it's time to acknowledge the current OC members. I would like to thank Elizabeth, Jim, Diana, and Teresa for the contribution and support as members of the OC community. Your support is truly appreciated. If you wish to learn more about the OC membership program, you can check out the membership video to get a detailed description of all the perks you will receive. Don't miss out on the adventure and become a member now and join us today. If these stories reminded you of an encounter that you may have had, then please forward them to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. I would be honored to share your story on this channel. Thank you all for listening until the end. I truly appreciate it. Please hit that like button on your way out and smash that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all my latest uploads. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you all next week right here on Ontario Cryptids.